statically determinate means stiff, almost rigid, can find forces, independent of deflections, strength, independent of stiffness. Statically determinate, uh, indeterminate all systems need both force and deflection to carry out the calculations. So remember that is how statically determinate and statically indeterminate systems work. So you have to get to the stage where uh, you have to be you could you could do both of them okay at this stage we are here this is a sd system so things are nice si systems are a are a problem statically indeterminate systems are a problem i mean problem meaning you have to do more statically determinate systems uh, it's easy okay so now that we got that so how do we do a force analysis remember The two structures or two objects of the same material can be compared through stress. What I mean by that is I do not compare the forces, but I compare force per unit area. Why is that? Because I told you that forces, the failure forces, the, the forces required to break the system scales with the area for ideal specimens. Okay, force, force required to break will scale, will approximately will scale with area. for ideal systems. What I mean by that is, uh, if I have 1 centimeter squared and it fails at 2000 newtons, a 2 centimeter squared system will fail at 4000 newtons. That is why what we do is we look at stress. In our case, stress in bar AB, sorry BC. The tensile bar is FBC divided by cross sectional area of BC, which is um, 2308. How much was it? 2309. So let us make it 2310. In fact, we do not have that kind of accuracy, it is only 2300, but it is okay. 2300 Newtons divided by area. So now you can see by choosing the angle we figure out the length of BC, by choosing the area we now can figure out the dimension. So I had to pick some area. So how much can we pick? Let us say I pick example, how big do you want it to be? So you know if you think it is 1 meter squared, you know that is a gigantic, gigantic cable right. Look at that cable. For a for a for the crane, it was pretty thin. Agreed. So we're going to try a small area. Let us try one centimeter squared. That's about this much. That's a cross sectional area. That's a pretty big beam. You know, it's a solid bar. So if I pick one centimeter squared for the cross section, that is equal to hundred millimeter squared because one, 1 centimeter is 10 millimeters. Okay? So what is the stress? Sigma is 2310 divided by 100 which is 23 Newton per millimeter square. That is called a mega Pascal. 
so you need a you need a material so if you if you make if you make a bar which is 1 cm squared in cross section you need a material that will withstand 23 mega pascals of load let us see if we can find such a material so let's see what's a typical material look like so i have a nice graph for a lot of different materials sorry i got to scan it like that there you go so now it's time for us to look at this one so i'm going to expand this out a little bit so that you can take a look See, this is the nice thing about uh, Excel. We can do calculations, everything on the same uh, setup. So you don't have to look at different things. I hope you can see this graph. Oops. We are right now not focused on the deflection. So I don't care about the x-axis. I don't really care about the x-axis. I'm just looking at the y-axis. And what matters is where it cuts this one. We have assumed that the bar is almost rigid, right? That means we are assuming hardly any deflection, right? If there is no deflection, how much force can it stand without any deflection? So let us pick something. Let us say 1020 steel. That's a commonly available steel. So you go back, 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 you go back. Let's see. Goes like that. There you go. It's out there. Okay, I'm sorry. That's yeah. That's 1020 steel, and you say its yield strength is here in megapascals. That's about 95 megapascals. Hey, you got plenty of plenty of reason to be happy because you only wanted 23 megapascals. You had 95 megapascals. If you look at aluminum, you can see it's about 1010 aluminum is about 50 megapascals. If you pick very high quality, I mean very high strength steel, which is this cold rolled steel, for example, and that's 600 megapascals, and you're saying, ah, oh, I don't need that. So if I pick um, 1020 steel, that's pretty nice, 95 megapascals. If I make it out of aluminum, it's about 50 megapascals. Both of them are okay. So I could do like an aluminum bar. The nice thing about aluminum bar is that uh, it won't rust and it's very light. The nasty thing about it is it doesn't like to be oscillated. So if you're going to put it in a windy location, probably aluminum bar is not such so great, but indoors, this, that, and the other, you could get away with doing aluminum at this stage. I mean, at this stage of evaluation, okay? So that's how we decide. So let's say I decide to pick 1020 steel. So I'm gonna go up here and we can now play a lot of what, what if games. Where was all my calculations? Yeah, there's my calculation. So I'm going to play some what if type of situations. So I'm going to, and this is where we really want cross sectional area. I'm going to pick uh, 100 millimeters squared. So stress is 100 is uh, FBC divided by sorry, equals that divided by that. Okay, so now I can pick yield strength. Material type. So let us say I pick uh, 1020 steel. Yield strength turned out to be uh, 95 megapascals. So how much the ratio between this number and that number? How much is the actual load versus maximum load? So this is called factor of safety. So safety factor. <coughs> equal to uh, allowed load. Divided by design load. Uh, allowed stress divided by design stress. Design stress. 
which turns out to be equals that that divided by that and so you got a safety factor of 4 <coughs> that's a high safety factor and you can take hey